Hi guys, it's Samuel Larsen here again, and uh, I'm super excited to share with you some of my favorite conversion rate optimization case studies. And these are case studies that uh, focus on e-commerce product pages. So if you're an e-commerce merchant, definitely stick around. There's some really good value coming up in the next few minutes. And uh, I'm going to show you exactly how three different e-commerce retailers got some serious conversion rate boosts by doing uh, pretty tiny changes for their page. All right, so what can we learn from these people? Um, well, they might not be exactly applicable to your store and uh, every store is a little bit different. So treat it with uh, a grain of salt. However, these lifts were significant over a statistically significant sample size so they are no flukes and um, if they work for these retailer they will definitely work for some other retailers as well now you would definitely want to test these out and uh, checking out uh, what has worked for other stores is a great way to get some ideas so let's uh, jump into it uh, keep in mind that uh, we are focusing here on the product pages and uh, what uh, is good with this is that product pages in e-commerce they are really one of the money pages so with conversion rates in general and with optimization the biggest improvements exist close to the money and uh, we're jumping into it right now and i'm going to show you the first case study all right a really simple one to kick it off uh, this is talon.com it's a Finnish retail store and uh, I happen to be from Finland myself so it's one of my favorites but uh, this is a simple one and uh, very applicable to I would say most e-commerce stores because um, most stores actually don't have that many product likes and they're still uh, showing them on their product pages now the hypothesis here was that uh, this is actually conveying to the buyers that uh, this product is uh, unpopular and uh, it will create a mistrust because uh, it basically states that uh, nobody likes this product or this retailer. So it's a bit of an element that is distracting and doesn't serve a purpose. You could say it's unnecessary. So this is the control version of the study and uh, you can see it's boxed here and this is the variant so everything else stays the same just removing these uh, unnecessary buttons here so let's jump into the actual conclusions and uh, what kind of uh, results we got so here's the results removing social buttons increased conversions by almost 12 percent now, this is not uh, a study run by me, but uh, it is ran to a significant sample size so that we can pretty much point out that um, this result is pretty accurate. Whether it's 10% or 14% doesn't really matter. All that we care about is the relevant uh, relative lift. So if it performs better than the control, we are happy with this change. Now, a couple of reasonings why this was, because we always want to break down what happened and why. Now, this was causing a negative social proof, like I said. It subcommunicates that uh, nobody likes this product and uh, it's not popular. So, since most of these product page uh, likes were at zero, it was uh, making the customers hesitant to buy from this company and doubt the quality of the products. Also, it is more buttons to the product page and buttons are distracting. So product pages should make it easy for people to buy and distracting elements drive away attention and uh, they take attention away from buying. So that's the reasoning behind this conversion lift. Whether this uh, reasoning was actually correct, we will never know. But uh, sounds like uh, a pretty sound reasons to me. Now, if you have a lot of products with zero likes, you might want to take off those. 
Facebook like buttons and uh, just uh, focus on selling. All right, so that's the first case study. Let's jump into the next one. So with e-commerce, a great thing is that uh, there's so many different products, but a lot of the principles still stay the same. So here is a product page for a watch and it is an authentic Seiko watch. And uh, for this, we are focusing here on the bottom of the page. So they used to have this uh, Wi-Fi from Express Watches box here. Now, the hypothesis here is that uh, people are a bit doubtful of uh, what the merchant says. So basically, if you can get somebody else to say what you are about to say, it will be a lot more powerful. And this is because people know that you as a seller, you have an incentive to say things a certain way and to hype up yourself. So this is also the reason why most like employers actually want references and so on, because uh, there's this conflict of interest between uh, what uh, is good for you to say and uh, what is good for the employer to hear. So that's why instead of uh, using YPI from Express Watches, uh, this company uh, changed this element to actually show the trust pilot. So this is. Uh, the same uh, box basically but uh, instead of them telling why they're great they let them customers tell why they are great so people naturally resist sales and persuasion but uh, this is instantly more believable and uh, this is basically the change so you can see in this um, this page here that uh, this is the change and uh, they're just showing product reviews, basically, and uh, reviews of the store. All right, so pretty simple stuff. Probably shouldn't uh, make that big of a difference, right? Because uh, all you're doing is changing a part of the page that is not that relevant anyway, right? But uh, for this, they actually got very significant results. So just changing this box reduced buyer anxiety and increased their sales by 58 percent and uh, that is such a significant uh, change that like one company an e-commerce company could uh, almost 60 percent uh, lift their business by a simple change is mind-boggling but uh, sometimes with conversion rate optimization, conversion optimization, you will get these kind of golden nuggets that uh, just hit the ball so perfectly that uh, it will produce a lift that is almost unimaginable. So that's why we love testing. That's why we want uh, to try out different things because uh, there might be a you could say cold waiting on the other side of the rainbow. Anyway, let's move on to the third and final study of uh, this video. And uh, this will be a simple price study. Now, here you can see that uh, this is uh, the variation actually. So the, in this variation, the product is shown without uh, the zeros. In the price so here's the original the original and the variation so just displaying sense or not displaying sense that's the question and uh, again you probably wouldn't think that these kind of things would matter and uh, they actually change in two places on the collections or category pages and not the product pages as well so this uh, changes uh, throughout the site. And uh, basically, the guess or the hypothesis would be that uh, the shorter prices would actually be considered as lower, even though they're the exact same. But uh, they would uh, 
appear less like uh, a prices and uh, more like um, basically you would uh, make it look less painful so since it doesn't look like a price too much it's not as painful and here are the results so the version without the zeros was a big winner so we can compare the two versions and this was run to a statistical significance of 99.9 percent .9%. and uh, the winning version again without the zeros actually had 9.3% uh, more add to cart links. So it was tested uh, with, you could say that's a vanity metric, but uh, it's still a significant improvement on uh, this metric that uh, doesn't really track money, but uh, still helps people to move uh, further towards the money. Also, an interesting thing is that uh, They had uh, people do more visits per order. Uh, so that's actually a bad thing. But at the same time, when they did buy, they did buy a lot more. So the revenue per visit was a lot higher. So this was tested to a 99% confidence rate. And uh, you could say that's a little bit too much almost, but uh, it does validate the results. And I wouldn't recommend testing to this far because uh, it's kind of pointless to be super scientific. We are here to make money after all. And um, statistical significance to this level is not necessary. But um, it is all about appearance and you can uh, influence people to view your products or prices in different ways by tiny changes. So no big changes done, but uh, big results. And um, really, the shorter the price, the lower it appeared. So you might be one willing to test this on your store as well. And uh, see me like uh, show me the results. I'm curious if this works for other stores as well. But um, always keep in mind that these are for specific stores and every store has their specific audience. And uh, there is no real one size fits all rules or at least very few of them so even though this might work for this retailer there is absolutely no guarantee that uh, it will work for you however uh, might be worth a test it's up to you hopefully you got uh, a lot out of this video and uh, i'll be making more of this in the future so make sure to subscribe if you at all liked it and uh, you will be notified uh, when there is more videos. All right. It was Samuel Larson here. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.